How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Vora Motors. I'm AJ Hart, here today with another guide to improve your ride. For today's video, I get to show you all a new accessory that we've got. Ah, uh, yesterday, should be yesterday, definitely yesterday, I have to upload this video Friday. If you paid attention to our Instagram and our Facebook yesterday, we announced our new handlebar and storage case for the eMove Cruiser. These are both accessories that install right on top of the deck of the Cruiser, and they're really cool actually. So for today's video, my job is to take you through how to install each of these new accessories. The handlebar can be installed all on its own, but the storage case needs to be installed on the handlebar. So I'm gonna show you all how that works. Now, fair warning, this is not like a short job. It probably took me like 40 minutes to do the whole thing because there's a lot of screws that all need put together. There's like 16 screws and nuts. In fact, let me go over really quick all the parts that you're going to need for this video. Two pieces of the handlebar, four screws, two square plates, two wing shaped plates, four 13 millimeter screws, eight 15 millimeter screws, and four 21 millimeter long screws. Hey, how's it going? This is AJ. Really quick, I forgot to mention four pieces. So there's two little rectangular braces that are going to go inside the case, and there's two long beams that have a bunch of holes down it that are going to go underneath the case. A lot. Nothing too difficult here. It's all screws, but it is time consuming. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'll walk you through every step of the way. Now the very first thing that we need to do is remove these two screws on the back of the cruiser's deck. These two screws might be a little bit tight, so breaking the seal might be tough, but once you do, you should be able to ratchet both of these out pretty easily. This is going to be where we install the handlebar for the cruiser. Now you see that the handlebar has this concave on the back of it that matches with the deck's concave. We're going to line this handlebar up with that. Now I mentioned those two different types of screws earlier. Right now we're going to take the fatter of those two screws and put that down onto the bottom of the handlebar. We're going to push it through this metal piece so that we can start putting those threads into the deck. Once I have the threads for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over and start putting the threads into the second one. I'm gonna get both of these threaded up so that I can start screwing it down nice and tight. Once those are screwed down, I'm gonna go ahead and ratchet this down nice and tight and we're ready to move on. Now we're gonna take this other part of the handlebar and pop it up in between these two forks. Now we're gonna take those two thin screws and put those into these two holes. You may need to wiggle it around and make sure that you can find the threads through on the other side, but once you do, go ahead and tighten these both down too. Tighten that all down and your handlebar should be installed. Now if you look on the back of the handlebar, you're gonna notice these four screws. These are going to be how we set up the housing for the storage case. These four slots are going to be where we put the small screws, those smaller 13 millimeter screws that I mentioned before. Now first things first, we're going to take one of those plates and then we're going to take one of those four small screws and screw that into the back here. Put a screw through one side of these, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a little trick of lining the Allen wrench through the whole thing. Line it into the screw, and go ahead and tighten that all the way down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the top screw as well. Once these are both tightened down, I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to the opposite side and tighten down these two screws. You're gonna notice that most of this job is just tightening things down. It's not a difficult job, it just is something that there's a lot to do.
Now I noticed that these two braces aren't lined up correctly. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is loosen up both of these and let the brace kind of fall down and then come back and tighten it all down. That, I'm gonna let loosen these, let it fall, and then I'm gonna come back and tighten it all down. I wanna make sure that these are level because the whole brace that we're going to be building is on top of these. Now we're gonna take one of those medium sized screws, that wing shaped plate, and a nut. I'm gonna go ahead and put this screw through the two braces and then tighten the nut down on the opposite side finger tight. Once the screw is secure, I'm gonna go ahead and grab an eight millimeter wrench and that Allen wrench and I'm gonna start tightening this down all the way. Once this is all tight, we're ready to grab the second screw and put it down through the bottom slots. Now I'm noticing that it doesn't quite fit through the bottom slot because it isn't lined up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this top screw and move this brace up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and have the lip of this brace a little bit higher than the lip of the opposite brace. That way I know that the screw will be able to go in through the bottom. Now that it's through, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that nut, put it on the end of the screw, and then grab a wrench and start tightening it. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the same job on the opposite side. I actually forgot to film myself doing it for the bottom screw, so you're just gonna see me be doing it for the top one over here but it's the same exact thing. Put the wing brace a little bit higher than the screw brace, feed the screw and the nut through, and tighten them both down. I'm gonna give it a little wiggle to make sure it's secure, and now we're ready to move on. Now we're gonna take this long U-shaped brace, and we're gonna put the U facing on the bottom, and we're gonna go ahead and line this up with the gaps that you're seeing on the wing brace. And like before, we're gonna go ahead and put a screw through the top, put a nut on the opposite end, and tighten this down. I'm gonna go ahead and push this screw all the way to the end, closest to the handlebar, before I tighten it all the way down. And I'm gonna do that on the opposite side as well. Again, putting that screw down, pushing the brace as far towards the handle as I can, and then tightening it down. I just find that that's a nice reference point because this is going to be where the storage case actually goes on. Once these two screws are nice and tight, we're ready to move on to the next beam. Again, I'm gonna line it up so that the U is on the bottom and I'm gonna feed a screw on one side, put a nut on the opposite side and start tightening it down. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning is I'm actually not going to tighten this one down all the way. I wanna make sure that there's a little bit of wiggle room so that for the next step, it's a little bit easier to line up the screw. I'll get a little bit into that later. Just a little bit of wiggle room, just enough that I can slide it with a little bit of force. And we're gonna go ahead and do that on the opposite end as well. Screw, nut, tighten it down, but this one again is not fastened all the way. Tighten it down, but again, make sure that it's not tightened all the way because we want to be able to wiggle it just enough that we can line up some of these holes. Now, what are these holes that I mentioned? If you open up the storage case, you're going to see these two grooves on the inside. We're going to take these long rectangular plates and drop those into the holes right here. Now you notice that the Pelican has these four holes. Those four holes are going to line up with the holes that are on the beams that we just installed. That's why I was mentioning that we needed to have those back ones wiggling because we need to line up all four of these holes. Now the storage case itself can be installed either front ways or back ways. Whichever way you want it to open up, go ahead and install it that way. I like having it open towards the front, so I'm gonna put that as the front ways. Now we're gonna be taking those four long screws and putting them down through the storage case and through those holes on the bottom so that they come down through those beams. Normally I would just put a nut on them right now and tighten them, but I wanna go ahead and show you what I mean. See, now that we're down underneath, you can see all four of those screws poking through the bottoms. 
This was why I mentioned that the back beam was loose, was because I had to kind of wiggle that around to get that lined up. Now that all four screws are poking through the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and grab those four nuts and then tighten down each one of these screws. This particular step probably took me about 10 minutes. It's a bit to get these all fastened down. Again, this job is super easy to do. It's not that difficult. It's just time consuming because it's a lot of little screws that need to be tightened down. Now that all four of those screws are down, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a wrench and I'm gonna to try to tighten those two nuts that we left a little bit loose when putting those plates on. Once those are secure, I'm gonna shake the case a little bit and it looks good to me. So there we have it, the job's finished. Like I said, it's not a difficult job, but it's very time consuming. Uh, like I said at the top of the video, this probably took me about 40, 50 minutes to do because it was just a lot of screwing things in. But once that's all set up, you have a new storage case. And this can be used for any sort of stuff. Uh, if you want to put a couple tools in there in case you ever have a breakdown, if you want to try to put a soda or two inside, it's not a cooler, but it'll carry the stuff. Or if you're like me, I'm going to be throwing a camera into the back there. Maybe uh, get some foam cut out so that it's a nice size. Put a camera back there, keep it nice and safe while I'm cruising around, which I'm pretty excited about. Now, if you have any questions or concerns that came up doing this job, or if you bought it yourself and have some more questions, don't be afraid to drop those questions in the comments down below. I'll be checking out all the comments to make sure that I can answer everything. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like to see us do, go ahead and drop those into the comments down below as well. And as something exciting, we have plenty of other accessories that have recently come in and more that are going to be coming in. So. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel and I'll be able to give guides on how to install those accessories as I get those guides together. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that this video helps and I hope you enjoy your ride.